What are the principles from the millionaire next door that can help you determine if your neighbor is a millionaire? Jay Stanley went from being the son of a subway car driver to becoming a well-known author who had little expectation of his accomplishment, but ended up selling over 4 million copies of his book. Stanley is a well-known name. He sought answers with a zeal and desire to comprehend what makes the wealthy become what they are. He developed principles that have revolutionized the way many people think about money after examining small groups of people with good money. And if you haven't already done so, I strongly advise you to do so. So in today's video, we'll go over some of the author's tips for determining whether or not your next door neighbors are millionaires. Number 1. Examine their footwear and attire. My aunt once taught me that you should look at a man's shoes to determine his worth. At first, I mistook this to indicate that they should wear the most flashy, fashionable shoes of the day. However, I eventually discovered that it meant that the shoe should be well-fitting, clean, and well-maintained. I'm like the majority of individuals who believe that being a millionaire entails having the most up-to-date Gucci shorts, Louboutins, and so on. Wearing luxury shoes and bags, however, does not always imply that you have the financial means to support that lifestyle. Many YouTube and Instagram influencers wear all of these labels in today's society. The little-known fact is that the items are usually either presents from paying customers or orders that will be returned to the store following the video and photo sessions. All of this frantic activity is an attempt to keep up with the Joneses, which is something a wealthy person would not waste time proving. The millionaire next door would never be caught wearing such pricey shoes or clothing. They want to dress in clothes that are clean, crisp, and well-kept. It's no surprise that they purchase new clothing that will outlast any new fashion fad because they are timeless pieces. The affluent, on the other hand, wouldn't mind spending as little as $10 for a shirt or pair of pants, as long as they fit properly and are neatly stitched. Number 2. Their Well-Being the most obvious distinction between someone with money and someone who doesn't is their overall health, particularly in matters such as their teeth. Because these people have access to frequent dental visits, their teeth are white and properly cared after, which is the most silent evidence that they are wealthy. This is something you should pay attention to the next time you're conversing with a person you think might be your millionaire next door neighbor. Another thing to keep in mind is that these rich neighbors, on the whole, take care of their health and appearance. They are usually fit and do not consume a lot of junk food. They would rather eat a nutritious and well-prepared meal in the privacy of their own homes. They jog early in the morning or after walking their dog later in the day. The wealthy are prepared to put in the effort to stay healthy all year because they feel that money is earned via good health. Number 3. Take a look at their home and vehicle. A high-status work puts pressure on you to choose a home that matches your job position. In most circumstances, you'd go into financial debt and then pay a monthly morale fee for at least three years. Now, because you reside in a premium location, you're aware that you'll need an automobile that conveys your status. I count myself among you. To acquire the latest car model, you'll have to go deeper into debt. Again, your house requires bigger, better furniture, since you might be hosting the next barbecue. And woe unto you if the tiles don't match the carpet when your neighbors walk in. That new house has simply resulted in increased spending, putting you further in debt. If you're one of the few fortunate people in society, you're fortunate to be named doctors, lawyers, engineers, and other positions that pay well. It's possible that you won't become bankrupt. However, your savings capacity will be drastically decreased to nearly nothing. The millionaire next door, on the other hand, understands the full cost of an expensive home. As a result, they will choose a house that is reasonably priced and meets their needs. To keep their expenses down and maintain or perhaps enhance their savings margin, they'll go about town in an old-looking car model. When a promotion or a spouse's advancement comes knocking, they don't immediately upgrade their lifestyle. They save the extra money for a rainy day because they understand that true independence can only be obtained via wise financial management. Take a look at their interiors. Art has the power to inspire us, improve our environment and lives, and allow us to see things from different angles. 
since the revolution, and even before that, it has been customary for individuals with money and status to spend millions on it. This is not by chance. The ultra-rich have employed art to shield their riches from inflation for generations. As a result, it's not expected that 10 to 30 percent of millionaires invest in art. The art market, according to the Wall Street Journal, is one of the hottest markets on Earth, with modern art prices outperforming the S&P by 174 percent from 1995 to 2020. It also has a low connection with any major asset class, making it an excellent portfolio diversifier. Furthermore, the overall value of art is projected to be $1.7 trillion, with Deloitte projecting an increase of $900 billion by 2026. The only issue with the art business is the high entry hurdle. I don't know about you, but I don't have the financial means to purchase a painting. Your capital is in danger as it is with all investments. Your portfolio's worth might go up as well as down, and you may earn back less than you put in. And as always, exercise caution when it comes to investing. Nothing is without risk. Number 4. Their Spending Patterns The author used a few key phrases throughout the book, including under accumulation of wealth, or UAW, and prodigious accumulation of wealth, or PAW. Under accumulation of wealth refers to a group of people who appear to be wealthy, but are actually in debt. While prodigious accumulation of wealth refers to a group of people who don't appear to be millionaires, but are nonetheless wealthy. The folks who practice prodigious accumulation of wealth are referred to as next-door millionaires in the book. These are the types of persons who are hardly noticed. They seldom celebrate first birthdays or 50th birthdays, and they don't live extravagant lifestyles. They're just plain ordinary. For many families, the most crucial task is to live within their means. You'd mistake them for a financially troubled family if you didn't know any better. They are very frugal people who value experiences over material possessions. This means that the only significant purchase they make each year is a memorable vacation. Those who practice under accumulation of wealth, on the other hand, would rather live like a royalty from Dubai. Number 5. Investment Patterns The millionaire next door is cut from a different cloth than the average person. Their financial patterns reflect this. A normal income earner may try everything they can to sneak in a new renovated lifestyle. And they'll finish up hurrying for things that aren't worth anything. Some buy flashy clothes and rent luxurious apartments in the suburbs. But the few millionaires think strategically. They prioritize establishing an insurance fund and obtaining health insurance coverage before indulging in other items. Putting the two together is like comparing gold and metal. Within a few years, the latter will have amassed a substantial sum of money whilst the spendthrift will be suffering the repercussions of picking a costly ride that exceeds his salary. The wealthy also travel by car, but if you ask them why they chose that particular car or type, they will tell you why they are wealthy. The millionaire down the street is unconcerned about the flamboyant lifestyle and prefers to live quietly. After all, a peaceful life is a pleasant life. Number 6. Upbringing of Children I honestly believe we should all take a leaf out of the millionaire next door's book when it comes to children's upbringing. A child is an asset to a millionaire, and as their parent, they must be a role model for them. Children are naive, and they will imitate most of the habits they observe in their surroundings. As a result, it's critical to teach children the importance of saving, to devote time to financial education, and to endeavor to provide the finest possibilities for them to develop and cultivate their skills. Millionaires feel that it is a responsibility of parents to teach social skills to their children, how to communicate with others, how to act and present themselves, and so forth. Parenting is the same for all social classes, and only the parent has the ability to fully prepare the child for life. The children of the wealthy are exposed to a variety of forums that help them prepare for their future lives. Look at their children if you suspect your neighbor is a millionaire. Number 7. 
Choice of career. When you think of a millionaire who isn't from a wealthy family, you might assume that they have the most prestigious job in the world or that they struck it rich somewhere. When it comes to the guy next door though, none of it is near to the truth. They most likely have mundane and boring occupations. Farmers, welders, professors, and even traders are among them. There isn't a single one of these career alternatives that you can look at and say, they're probably the next Bill Gates. These minor job choices have allowed the millionaire neighbor to concentrate on what matters most, financial independence. Another factor is that most billionaires next door do not have a formal job and prefer to work for themselves. This, to me, appears to have been the appropriate path for them because they discovered the secret map to their success somewhere along their entrepreneurial journey. Number 8. Their Educational Attainment Traditional billionaires typically inherited their riches, while their next-door millionaire neighbor built his fortune from the bottom up. That is, they needed to get a strong education to enable them to understand rapidly what they needed to know. According to Jay Stanley, the majority of these millionaires are of this sort. They have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and even a PhD. Rather than using their education to land a well-paying 9-to-5 job, they decided to use it to start their own business. This demonstrates that their success was earned via a combination of hard effort, deliberate choices, and sacrifices. Number 9. They place a high value on debt repayment. Millionaires are more eager to pay off high-interest debts as soon as they are financially capable. According to research conducted by specialist Jay Zygmunt, yes, we can all agree that the wealthy have credit cards, but how many of them actually use them? And if so, how many of those cards have an outstanding balance? Debt might be beneficial in some situations, but it can also lead to drowning in a financial abyss. Millionaires are more cautious about debts and unneeded loans, and they are savvier with their money. Anything with a credit history is a no-no for them. They'd rather invest in themselves than have to pay large loans. Number 10. The spouse they choose. Choosing the correct partner is critical on your path to becoming a billionaire. You'll need someone to encourage you when you're down and to rejoice with you when you succeed. Furthermore, your partner will become a more active participant in key financial decisions. Your spouse's honest opinions will motivate you to achieve more, and simply having a spouse around will give you the strength to live. The perception of millionaires is one thing you'll notice has altered dramatically. Millionaires wanted to be seen, heard, and acknowledged throughout the 1980s and 1990s. Many millionaires nowadays would prefer to blend in with a crowd, even if they make more money than the bulk of people, their unique nature still sticks out. However, their wealth and prestige are more silent than any previous generation. That is why these millionaires from down the street would not be mentioned on Forbes. Would you claim you're the millionaire next door? Or a member of the UAW? Now that you know what you didn't know before, please let us know in the comments section below. So, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one.